Good afternoon. On behalf of Montega, welcome to the earnings call of the Poor Finance Holding SA regarding the preliminary fiscal figures of the financial year 2022. The CEO, Kieran Donnelly, and CFO, James Etherington, Etherington, will give you a presentation on the results in a moment. Afterwards, there will be enough time for our Q&A session. Questions can be then asked by audio line or chat. We are looking forward to the results and I hand over to Mr. Donnelly. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for taking the time and, and having the interest in our company. Um, I think we're quite proud of the results for 2022 and we look forward to your questions at the end of the presentation. We can move on to the next slide. So as I said, the 2022, we're quite proud of the results, um, but I think as you can see, we continue to uh, have a banner on our presentation, a uh, Ukrainian flag. So it's been a year that this war uh, has continued. Um, and so we you know, hope that we will not you know, be continuing this practice next year. Um, so hopefully uh, that, can be the war can end, but it's there still. But despite that, we had a strong, very strong 2022. Profits were up 32%. EBITDA was strong at 122 million with a nice margin of 37%. Interest income was up, uh, strong loan issuance. The cost of income ratio was down 45%. TBI Bank continues to grow with another strong, actually record quarter um, and particular growth in Greece. Asset quality is stable and it is aligned with our expectations, particularly reflecting the change in our portfolio, which we'll talk about a little bit more later on. Our balance sheet has been improved during this year, not just because of the earnings, but also because the Repay, uh, the related party loan that we have has been reduced by 30 million euro, and we've repurchased 19 million in bonds. And that was just in the fourth quarter. If you look up at the bar chart on the upper right hand quadrant of the, the slide, you'll see that we present in the different color blue, the more grayish blue, 25.8 million for the first quarter. That is the pro forma taking out Poland and, and including the Philippines. So you can see we have recovered in our fourth quarter. If you look at our fourth quarter of 2021 EBITDA and compare it to the fourth quarter of 2022, you see that we have overall in our business recovered our EBITDA lo levels um, and have replaced the, what we've lost when we sold Poland. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, TBI Bank continues to grow quite profitably. It's had a very strong year with issuance growth up over 35%. A lot of that is due to the fact that there's been an increase in the digitalization, something we've been working on for the past number of years. The positive launch in Greece, uh, which is exceeding our expectations. The launch of our app, the launch of the neon card. All of these initiatives are supporting these, this growth in a responsible way. They have purchased from the, from the online side of the business or the old core business, they've purchased 28 million in loans. So that, that process, which has been a number of years in the making has working and working very well. And we received up at the holdings a 10 million dividend from TBI. Next slide, please. One thing that I think is important for, for us as a business to focus on and would like to highlight it to our investors is the like for like loan issuance in the online side of the business. So excluding Poland, excluding the Philippines, just our core, old core business, excluding TBI, we see it at 16% growth. We think this is an important 
uh, part of our strategy is to continue to focus on our core, to optimize our core, to grow the core. Yes, we are trying to grow through, through acquisitions, like in the Philippines, uh, TBI Bank is growing this, but it's very important that we have a focus and do not ignore our core and continue to work to optimize that. And I'm very happy with the 16% growth we've had, and we look forward to more growth in 2023. As you can see, January, we're off to quite a good start. Next slide, please. Speaking about the acquisition in the Philippines, this, we're, this is also something that has worked quite well. So we purchased it uh, back at the, end of the, at the end of the first, beginning of the second quarter uh, of last year. Growth rates um, overall, if we're looking kind of the growth trend is on the 50 to 60% level in, in loan issuance. There was a stable period during 2022 when new legislation and regulation was uh, being implemented. During that time, our app was not, um, was not being used because everything was being reviewed. That was reviewed past all regulatory scrutiny, was relaunched, and now we're seeing more growth for the app again. And in, given the size of the market and the size of the opportunity, we launched a second brand there, Peso Ready, on top of online loans, Filipinas. So we have two brands operating in this market of 110 million people, and we're seeing very good growth in the second brand already, and we're very uh, optimistic about our prospects in this country going forward. It's contributed for the nine months, 4.2 million in profit. James, you want to take over, please? Sure, thanks, Kieran, and, and hello to everyone. So yeah, slide seven, we have the overall issuance and income that we're generating so across the business, and that brings the picture together. So Q4 overall, it's been a strong quarter, as Kieran said, so up again in TBI and maintaining that good Q3 level in the online business, which I would say is actually ahead of our expectations uh, as we went into the winter, so that's good. Um, we've also updated the right-hand side here to show the total income. So it's both the interest and the non-interest income, so including all fees. And you see this has grown nicely, so it's up 10% in Q4. You know, online, that's actually the first quarterly increase overall in 2022, where we're literally every market uh, contributing to that growth. So Spain was the biggest one, but it's great to see the growth coming across the, the business. On the technical side, we've also reclassified a few items like the corporate loan income into interest income, and where we have non-interest income, like in Philippines and Lithuania, uh, for some products, we reflect that uh, in the appropriate line. But I think the total is what's important, uh, and we have a nice increase for Q4. So if we look at slide eight, that interest income, it remains well diversified. Um, I know that's a very familiar picture by now, but we did want to show the, the breakdown of the full year result because that doesn't include Poland, because we report that separately now as a discontinued operation. So it has its, its separate line on the PL. Uh, and even with that, uh, we still don't have any markets, you know, more than a quarter of, of the total. So that uh, diversification is still very much uh, an important feature for the business. Looking forward, we'll start to have income for some new areas. So Greece for TBI, uh, and then on the online side, only very early stage, but we started a joint venture in, in the UK, so that will come in. And the Philippines contribution, obviously it's growing anyway, but it was only in for three quarters of the year uh, in 2022. So that will also pick up uh, as we go through this year. Now, if we move to slide nine on the costs, cost income ratio, as we said, improved to 45% in Q4. Costs held pretty flat in online. Uh, particularly, we're being very targeted with our marketing spend uh, there, particularly in the, the broader areas like TV. And at TBI, we had some additional investment, things like the neon card launch uh, there, but with the increase in, in revenue base was, uh, was very substantial. So overall, that ratio has continued to come down. Being efficient across all areas of the business uh, and how we manage the costs, obviously, is very important because there are still uh, you know, inflationary pressures around across the markets, uh, but that's something we remain, obviously, very, very uh, focused on. 
So we turn to slide 10, you see the, the result of that overall. And we've delivered the highest profit in recent years to 2022 at 41 million. So continuing to build that solid financial track record. The margins also remaining very solid. And on the EBITDA side, we've increased that again uh, at the same time as decreasing the leverage during the year. Uh, we'll have a look at that uh, more later on in the presentation, but that's, uh, that's continued that, that story and the interest coverage ratio is very solid as well. I think the equity to assets ratio has decreased slightly because we've had that strong loan growth at TBI uh, and it becomes a greater proportion of the overall balance sheet. So you'll see that in the portfolio in a second, but they obviously have their own capital requirements that are the relevant ones. Um, and I think effectively the ratio of the online business is, is higher uh, and we're building our equity base still. So the overall book value uh, is nearly 200 million now. So on slide 11, uh, you see that good loan growth in Q4 with 10% increase at TBI. Uh, we've also had an increase in online and bear in mind that we are selling Lithuanian loans there to TBI faster than originating them. The, the growth in the rest of the book actually was a couple of million uh, higher, euros higher than you see here. The NPL ratios as well have continued to improve uh, both across the business because we're managing that NPL portfolio very actively um, through sales and things uh, in both online and TBI. And then uh, let me hand over to Kieran to have a look at the, the vintages uh, and asset quality. Of course, this growth rate in this environment over the past year, both from the impact of the war and the impact on um, inflationary pressures uh, across our markets. Um, obviously, there's been a concern and questions about portfolio asset quality. And um, our asset quality has held up very well. You can see on the left-hand side of this slide, the vintage 90 days uh, past due for the uh, quarters going back. And you can see that it is very much in line with our past experience. So we're not seeing any uh, deterioration in that risk. If we look at a shorter term period, if we look at 30 day plus, so it, you know this way we can get more recent data uh, to look at, you can see there is a little bit um, in that port there, that dark uh, from the third quarter of 22. And that also we must keep in mind that our portfolio makeup has changed in as far as we have swapped out Poland for, for the Philippines, the Philippines has a higher risk structure um, and that's where the profitability, we do not manage to a risk number, we manage to a profitability number, an operating profit number. Um, and so in the case of the Philippines, the higher risk brings us a higher profit versus the model in, the, in Poland where a lower risk was better. So this is within our expectations and we believe is a way for us to optimize the performance of the business. If we go on to the next slide, you can see that the net impairment charge the quarter is growing. That's growing in line with the size of the portfolio, which is also growing. And as I've pointed out in the past with investor meetings, um, if we look at the bar chart, the part that is below the dark blue, this is, this is what we've recovered, and it is essentially our over-provisioning. I like to monitor this, this number, this statistic, as a sign that our provisioning is conservative, that we are careful in what we're doing and, and that we're bringing back. So I think our provisioning continues to be prudent, uh, and, and you could argue too conservative, or maybe shareholders could argue it's too, too conservative, but um, we believe it's prudent and comfortable where that is. Cost of risk at the bank, if you look at the cost of risk uh, number, which a lot of people that follow banks do like to look at, you can see that for 2022, it was actually better than 21, 5.1 versus 5.5. We do not track and we do not believe it's applicable to look at the cost of risk number for a short-term product business. This is why I've online and our vintage analysis uh, is what we use there, which we've talked about before, and which we monitor very closely, uh, actually watching and reports on a weekly basis for all our portfolios and all our products.
James? Yeah, thanks, Kieran. So, yeah, slide 14. Um, as we've said, we've delivered another solid quarter of EBITDA, both in online and TBI. Um, and we're particularly pleased to complete that significant reduction uh, in the related party loan in Q4. So let's reduce that by more than half. Um, and that's given us 13 million in cash and a significant reduction again in the bonds uh, outstanding. So that total notional down to around 260 million. And that's an important you know, improvement, again, I think, in the leverage metrics for the business. So uh, you know, maybe they're listening now. We hope that that's something that our rating agencies will be taking note of. Um, that's you know, It's been a big change, as you can see, from the start of last year to this year. It's, it's nearly, a, nearly half, actually, the, um, the overall leverage multiple, uh, down at just over two times in terms of the, the bond debt to overall EBITDA. And we also cover that interest expense uh, still on the bond side twice with just what we generate from the online business. Uh, that interest expense is, you know, is some way below 30 million now with these latest reductions. So I think that's good progress financially made in, in 2022, particularly on those credit metrics. Uh, so let me pass back to Karen. Thanks, James. So to, to sum up, so we can quickly get to your, get to your questions. Um, 2022 is strong performance um, and, you know, in challenging times, we sold the Polish business in a, you know, very difficult time uh, under very uh, tight time constraints. Uh, we closed the Philippines acquisition, which was done over a long period of time after careful due diligence and consideration. Um, the coincidence was that they happened one after the other, um, which actually was fortunate that we were able to replace uh, the Polish performance with the Philippines and with the growth in the rest of our businesses. So that 32% growth rate, EBITDA growing, the interest income growth, uh, which of course is important, along with the growth of the portfolio, which is, will support further growth as we move forward in our interest income and in our profits. TBI's new initiatives in Greece with the consumer app, this orange neon card, um, all, all setting us up well for 2023 performance. I think our balance sheet is in some of the best shape it has ever been, um, not only because of the debt reductions um, that, that James spoke about, but also the quality of the balance sheet with our uh, related party loan reduced by 30 million. So these strong uh, credit metrics, um, you know, with our with our strong asset coverage, uh, I think puts puts us in a very strong position to whether you know everyone asks me, and we just celebrated our 15 year anniversary as a business, and and people ask me what's the secret you know, how did you last 15 years? And I think the key is that, you know, we have a culture that adapts and embraces change. And, you know, we have gone through, um, you know, many different financial cycles, pandemic, now a war, um, regulatory changes, and, you know, competitive changes, and through all those changes for finance has found a way to adapt, to change and to keep moving forward. So this resilient track record, I think is something that we're proud of and something that you know, we understand that having a strong balance sheet and a culture that embraces change and finds solutions is what's going to keep us moving forward uh, in the years to come. So thank you very much for your attention and please, um, please ask whatever questions you may have. Thank you very much, Mr. Donnelly and Mr. Etherington for the detailed presentation. We will now move over to the Q&A session. Um, questions can be asked by audio line or chat. If you would like to ask your question directly to the management, please raise your virtual hand. If you have dialed in by phone, please press the star key followed by number nine to enter the Q&A queue. You'll be then asked to unmute yourself by pressing the star key followed by number six. And we already received the first question. Please go ahead, Mr. Lehmann. 
one second here. Now, uh, can I be heard? Yes, I hope so. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, congratulations, uh, Kieran and James. Uh, a reasonably good quarter. Um, I have just three questions left. One, uh, to my surprise, you want to enter the UK market in a joint venture. Maybe you can shed a little bit of light on uh, what the plans are and what the prospects are. What, what are you seeing there in a few years? What that asset uh, base could be in the UK? Uh, my second question would be on debt sales. Uh, it has been observed that uh, some of the buyers of uh, defaulted reference claims have shut down. Now, are you feeling that in the market? Are you seeing a less supply or, or sorry, less demand and maybe supply that can be matched by demand from the debt purchases of defaulted reference claims? And my, uh, my very last question is, uh, when I look at your balance sheet and I see that the net loans to related parties have been reduced by 30 million, uh, that's a very, very surprising positive move, I must say. Uh, but then on the next line, I see net loans to other parties. What is that net loans to other parties? Is that uh, your line of, uh, of credit you're given to the Polish, uh, uh, to the former Polish operations? That's it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Frank. Uh, good to hear you. Thank you for dialing in. Um, James, I'll, I'll take the first question in first and second or half of the second one and you can pick up on the rest. So um, on the UK, um, yes, I would say it's, uh, it's our third, third venture into the UK. The first one uh, was way back before the UK uh, came out with its regulation and we decided to exit because of the uncertainty and we were small then at that time in the UK, there was uh, regulation was being discussed because of the great uncertainty about that. We decided not to invest anymore, close down, see what happened with the regulation, and then potentially re enter the market. Uh, we did re enter the market in 2015, if I remember correctly. Um, and at that time, we went in um, to a new regulatory environment. Um, Frankly, I think we went in too hard, too fast, and um, and we stumbled. We cut our losses and uh, licked our wounds and, and got out. So why go back a third time? What we've done this time is that the, the demand and the need for this product exists, for a short-term loan product still exists in the UK. It is a clearly regulated market. The competition and most of the players left the market, leaving a large opportunity for those who could figure out how to operate effectively in this, in this environment. Instead of going in on our own, um, we've found a local partner who um, has been operating successfully has a very strong compliance and regulatory culture um, that is com you know, completely and fully compliant with the new regulations. And they have found a way, very cost-effective way to lend within the regulations, within acceptable risk levels um, in, in the UK market. So we have entered a joint venture with them and we are, as I said, the mistake we made in 2015 was we went in fast and hard. This time we're going in slow and easy. Um, so we've started off, uh, say we've made put in a million pounds uh, to start slowly and we will see how this works. And again, step by step, very slowly. So in this year, you asked about what size of, I would say in this year, um, we're probably, tried to build up a portfolio of close to five or six million pounds and see how it works. If it's working, I think the potential for the future 2024, 2025 is in the order of between 20 and probably 20 to 50 million pounds. So that's, it's a, it's, if it's working, it's a large opportunity, but we are going in slowly, 
carefully and with a proven partner who has proven the ability to operate in this environment. Your second question about uh, debt sales. There have been some, some people have pulled out of the debt market, but for our, for our side, um, we find that there's sufficient demand. Some of the pricing has, you know, hasn't kept pace uh, for certain product segments, particularly say the larger ticket loans, we've seen more uh, softness in demand for the larger ticket loans, the more installment loans. For our traditional short-term loans, the market has held up well. Uh, and I don't see particular challenges for us on that part of the market. James, I don't know if you'd like to, to uh, elaborate more on that, but and then could you please answer the question on the other loans? Yeah, sure. No, I look, I think that's fair on the debt sales. Um, buyers, we still have you know forward flow agreements in place and, and working in essentially all of them. I, I think I can only think of one provider where we kind of stopped uh, last year and we replaced that fairly quickly. Uh, as Kieran says, the, the larger tickets, uh, we have seen some pressure on prices, but we're also, I think, looking uh, again at what we can do in, internally uh, and with external collections to make sure we get best value there. So we you know, we're not in a position where we just have to take whatever price is offered. We have you know, alternatives that we can develop you know, in-house as, as well. So you know, I think we're in a good place there. And then, yeah, on the other loan, uh, Frank, I think you, you were quite right. That is the, the loan we have to the Polish business. There's no change in the outstanding there. That's still a 30 million euro uh, equivalent. It just wasn't on the balance sheet at year end last year because it was consolidated out uh, at that stage. So no, no change in the Polish exposure they they pay us you know nearly a million euros of interest every every quarter uh, which which uh, which is useful income for us okay thank you very much mr lehman if you have a follow-up question please um raise your virtual hand again we will now move forward with um the person uh, isical free leia please unmute yourself hello can you hear me Yes, yes, hi. Yes. Hi, how are you? Good, Ezekiel. Well, congratulations again. Very impressed by the result, and especially what you mentioned, you have been adapting very well to changes. So that's very nice to see. So my question is, uh, again, and also very happily surprised about Philippines and being profitable. Uh, only the first nine months of, of acquiring the company is, 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 is very, very impressive. So uh, in, in your view, in terms, especially in those, those markets, which are big, no? And so how you see your funding going forward to support the business? So in TBI, of course, you have the ability to raise deposits, but then in the rest of the markets, I mean, it's more difficult to raise funds, especially under current environment. So do you think that you have sufficient funding to support Philippines? You will need more. And then the second question is when you make a decision to purchase bonds, so how you analyze the use of excess cash on purchase bond vis-a-vis -vis deploying in the portfolio? Thanks for the questions, Ezekiel. Um, you know, um, got to say we weren't surprised the Philippines was profitable. Um, that was that was the plan. But um, yeah, but if we're, of course we're happy that we were able, you know, that the team was able to execute. But remember that was an acquisition of an existing business and that's an important, that was an important part of the strategy there. And, and I think one of the reasons why we took such a long time in making that acquisition and doing our due diligence, um, very happy with the local team and the way they operate. As far as funding that business, um, and, and in fact, all of our business, but, um, the Philippines business is particularly has a short-term lending business. So it is not, and it's positive right now, generating cash. So actually during the course of this year, James will correct me, but um, you know, in this, particularly in the fourth quarter, they were returning funding to us um, that, that we had provided from HQ to Philippines. So they had returned funding because they're positive cash flow, given the short-term nature of the business. Um, we plan to, you know, that growth will accelerate, and we will probably have to put in. But it's not the same as funding an installment loan business or you know a term lending business. So that's uh, about the funding. Also, um, we've been approached 
locally uh, to be provided funding uh, from a local financial institution in pesos. Um, so we're looking at that, of course, in line with the with the bond covenants about uh, other funding. But I think the opportunities in the Philippines will grow with the business growth. So as we continue to grow and it generates its own cash um, and it gets a larger size, I think we will have opportunities to fund that business locally uh, as we go forward. For funding the rest of the business, um, we do have, and the, the question about do we buy back bonds or do we deploy capital, um, you know, we do have bonds on our balance sheet uh, that we bought, and to the extent we see opportunities to invest that money in portfolio or portfolio growth uh, in, a, in, a, in a return, we're looking at the yield on the bond versus the yield on the business. And we're just deploying the capital on that basis. So I think we're in, a, you know, our, we have a strong balance sheet. We have good cash reserves, um, and, and I think we're in we're in a strong position to fund our business throughout 2023. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it seems that there are no further questions. Um, Therefore, I would say thank you very much, Mr. Donnelly and Mr. E. Terrington, for the detailed presentation and your time answering all those questions. I will hand over for some final remarks to Mr. Donnelly. Once again, to thank all the investors for your support. Um, you know, we work we work hard to be you know, good custodians of your investment of your capital, and uh, I I hope we can continue to do that. Uh, going forward. So thank you and have a good day or evening, depending on your time zone. <laughs>